Hey everyone, this is Mayur. Welcome back to MLWorks. In this video, we'll be discussing what is Kubernetes and why it is important to learn Kubernetes in the first place. And then we'll get started with setting up Kubernetes in our local machine. So let's understand why do we need to learn for like Kubernetes for machine learning itself, right? Why do we need? Let's ask ChatGPT first of all. What does it tells us about MLOps and Kubernetes. So, machine learning MLOps is nothing but a concept similar to DevOps. It's like doing the whole thing, the whole package of ML machine learning lifecycle from POC to deployment in production and then monitoring your model performance and retraining if required. So, there are a bunch of things that all combine together to form MLOps. And Kubernetes is nothing but a platform which tries to help you perform all those such things which I discussed for MLOps from end to end. It is an open source orchestration tool that helps you to deploy applications and scale the application as needed and then do the monitoring of the performance or monitoring of your application and everything. Okay. So these two things go hand in hand. Okay. From the answer itself, from the from ChatGPT, what we get is so MLOps is nothing but a tools or practices for machine learning system development. Okay, this is requires collaboration between teams and automation of pipelines, both data pipelines, model pipelines, and then deployment of those machine learning model, and then reproducing the experiments. Okay, and then monitoring those experiments, uh, monitoring the deployments as well. Okay, and Kubernetes is nothing but a container orchestration platform which tries to deploy your uh, model or your any of those performance metrics that you want to measure. All those things can be done through container orchestration. And you can also, since Kubernetes is a, a distributor, allows us to what scale or distributed computing is available possible. Okay, it helps you to do scaling as well. And you can load balance your uh, request uh, through what different traffic map protocols. And then you have self-healing, like you can, what if a pod goes down, pod goes down, then you can restart the pod or it can create a new pod. Okay, so the combination of these two, like MLOps and Kubernetes, helps you build a system which is scalable, which is performance management is easier to do. The versioning is also easier and the microservice architecture supported by Kubernetes helps you to what, achieve better performance and manage those services efficiently, be it training service or be it inference service or be it data ingestion process. So all this can be managed efficiently through Kubernetes. So these two things like MLOps and Kubernetes should go hand in hand. Okay, there are various tools as well, which helps you what run directly ML pipelines on Kubernetes. Some of them are including like Kubeflow, okay, which uses Kubernetes in the backend to what, create multiple inference endpoints or serving endpoints. MLflow though it is not Kubernetes native, okay, you can run MLflow's uh, deployment and uh, track your experiments. And similarly, say the code for deploying management uh, ML models again on Kubernetes. So this is with respect to understanding why you need to have a, a tool expertise or basic understanding of Kubernetes so that you can employ that specific skill in your next project, okay. So with that, what I'll do is, I'll move to the uh, installation of Kubernetes or Minikube on your local system such that you can get started with Kubernetes. So for that, I'll have a document which I have created. So this is the setting up of Minikube on your local system. Uh, this is Minikube start. So there are specific bunch of pre-requirements that needs to be followed. Uh, first is you need to have two CPU cores or more, then 22 GB of RAM, 20 GB of hard disk, there is an internet connection that is required. And the most important is the container. Container is nothing but, but you want to deploy your application. Okay, if you want to create a pod, so you need a Docker. Okay or any other system like Podman or Parallels or anything, right? So you need something like that. So you have to install Docker first before you install Minikube itself. This is the prerequisite. So uh, let me go back to this documentation. 
So what I did is, uh, I just followed this documentation and it told me an error. So that's why I noted down what was that error was. So it has asked me to what? Uh, install docker, kvm2, podman, virtual box, any of those. So I went ahead and installed docker. So docker has its own set of process that can be uh, seen here. So installation methods, this is the docker documentation. So these are the bunch of steps that needs to be followed. Okay, I have already tried it out. It just updates your existing packages, downloads the certificates and curl and then apply certain permissions to the key links and then bunch of uh, download happens and then you update your packages again at the end. So once that is done, that is one key step that needs to be followed is this one. This is where you download Docker C, Docker CLI and container D, IO. So these are some backend uh, things that are running in Docker that helps you to build or run a Docker image. So uh, once these steps are done, right, this uh, five steps or six steps and then this specific app get installation, what we do is let me go back here so these are the prerequisites that once the installation is done we have to change the permission for docker sock as well since i have already installed these things okay let me just give the permission here okay i don't have so i have to do sudo here so so we have given the permission to docker sock now what we have to do is uh, once the prerequisite is done then we have to install it okay so we have these uh, couple of things let me go back to minikube start okay so we have a binary image here so we have to first download this thing uh, this from the google storage api and then we have to install the same amd package okay let me just directly try to do that minikube start okay I, since I have downloaded both, uh, since I downloaded both of the things, both the URLs, let me hit here, yeah. So it has started, okay, Minikube start using the Docker driver based on the existing profile, starting Minikube primary control plane node in Minikube cluster and pulling a base image, okay, and restarting the existing Docker container, okay, and Minikube okay so what it will do is it will download an image okay which will form a cluster uh kind of kubernetes cluster and uh, so if you see here right to pull new external images you may need to configure this one okay okay so this is some kind of a note that was given and then it is giving preparing kubernetes okay and you seeing image okay it is downloading certain images as well okay from docker io so once these steps are done, it will start the Kubernetes cluster in the local machine. So once that is done, right, we can uh, go ahead and interact with the cluster. So it is taking a little bit of a time because it has to download or it has to run those Docker images again. Okay. So, so what we'll do, right, uh, once uh, the inst Kobo Minikube is started, we'll look into what are the pods that are running in all the namespaces and then we'll look at the Minikube dashboard and then we'll also uh, take a sample image and try to run it and try to visualize the same image uh, locally in our browser. Okay, these are simple set of basic steps that we can uh, do to understand uh, if the cluster is up and running. So let me go back here. So yeah. If you see here, uh, we have downloaded some bunch of images which are running as pods now. Okay, and there are some dashboard features. Okay, for which you need some add-ons. Okay, so that can be done. So let me go back here. So first step is get pod. Okay, so we'll do something called as cutctl get pods hyphen a. So these are all the pods that are running in all the namespaces. So one interesting thing, right? So what I'm using here is kubectl, which is nothing but another CLI tool that helps you to interact with the Kubernetes cluster. So you have to install it separately. For that, you have steps again. 
So here it is for Cube, how to install kubectl binary with curl on Linux. Okay, you can follow the simple uh, commands and you can download it and you can start uh, using it. Okay, so this is quite simple. So here what I'm seeing is uh, a bunch of pods that are running already. Okay, if you see the default namespace, hello mini cube pod is running, which is nothing but your, uh, your deployment or a container running. Okay. So let me go back to Minikube start here. Okay. And uh, this is PO, it's nothing but pod, I guess. Okay. Then what we do is, uh, it has also installed something called as Minikube dashboard. So let me copy this one and try to run it here. So you can see the whole uh, things that are running in your system in a Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So here you have deployment, which is up and running. Then there is a pod under that deployment with the replica set one which is up and running everything is working fine here so on the left hand side we can see all the different set of things or features or uh, which are part of your kubernetes uh, environment okay you have cron jobs daemon sets deployments you will have one deployment which is hello mini cube and there will be services which is again hello mini cube and kubernetes service which is nothing but which communicates between the cluster and the node okay as api server okay and then there are ingresses services config maps so there are a bunch of things that got installed along with the basic installation of minikube okay there are like nodes oh, we are currently having a node which is currently using 750 milli cores and then there is 170 mb uh, ram getting used the total capacity is 16 cores and total memory is that is 32 GB. Okay. So it is utilizing part of it. Okay. And these are different bunch of services or modules of Kubernetes. Okay. Now, uh, what I wanted to show is, uh, since I have already one pod running, okay, let me go back here, pods. So I have this pod running, which is, uh, oh, like maybe a day ago I started it okay and there is a service okay which is hello mini queue so the way the things work is you have a deployment and then there is pods inside it and those pods are also connected to services so you can access those services through the port okay let me go back to uh, the terminal here so since we have already seen the dashboard let me just exist uh, come out of this particular thing okay that's fine now what i'll do is uh, i'll do something called as port forwarding such that from cluster i'll be able to uh, interact with the local systems browser okay so something called as so this is the next step right so this is where the deployment was created hello mini cube and this was the docker image that was used and then i expose that particular uh, deployment through port 8080 by mentioning the node port and once these two things are done okay it will be running as a pod okay now next part is i want to port forward that particular service so it is running on 8080 now in the local machine i want to use 7080 to access the particular uh, deployment so let me copy this and do the port forwarding okay so this is done let me take this and copy and then do something like this and here it is okay so after port forwarding the services that service and the pod that is running inside the cluster is able to access the outside uh, kubernetes uh, browser okay we can interact with that okay that particular it is running on 7080 and it, the request was served by hello minikube and this is just some basic uh, information that as part of your docker image that was pulled so this is running here uh, let me see if it is possible to exit so yeah this was stopped the port forwarding was stopped so this will if i refresh it will go off it should go off mm, okay so while that is happening okay let me go here so what is what we have done till now okay so as part of this video we understood why we need to learn kubernetes okay 
and then we started uh, setting up something called as mini cube to run a kubernetes cluster in our local machine and then we deployed a small pod okay which is echo server 1.0 okay and exposed it through services this is a service okay and we po forwarded it in our to our browser in the local machine using port forward services okay once that is done we were able to access that particular so let me run it again here 127 since it is not running i guess it is not showing up here so it was top grid yeah so we are not seeing it here uh let me close it so we have what exposed that particular pod on to the browser and we were able to access it now what we'll do is we'll come to the end of this particular video okay we were able to set up mini cube we were able to deploy one application small application or even small pod okay now we were able to expose that to our local uh, browser now what we do is we can stop our cluster to do that what we have to do is we have to just run mini cube stop so this will stop the uh, node okay on which it is running and then will all these deployments all these things will get stopped Okay, what will happen if I just go here? Okay, if I do gibbctl gibbctl pod hyphen a. So if you see here, everything is uh, now we are getting bunch of errors. Actually, we are not getting anything. Okay, because we don't even have that cluster running now. So it was stopped. So this is uh, the basic of what Kubernetes, how to setting setting it up in local machine. Okay. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll try to uh, build a kind of an application, okay, where you have machine learning model as part of one deployment, and then ML ops, which is ML flow, okay, which will be your separate uh, deployment. You will be interacting with these two, and then we'll also have some kind of monitoring and also data detection. All those kind of stuff we'll try to build and deploy it using Kubernetes. Okay, so with that I will conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching.